What is up guys, my name is Ted, bringing you another nuke, uh, yet again, this one's going to be on Quarry. Uh, this is actually one of the better maps to get nukes on, I was really surprised. Uh, there was a lot of inside spawns, I thought, but uh, it turns out when you're on defense, it's really, really easy to spawn trap on this map. Um, the reason I, I say this out of surprise is because uh, when Model for 2 is out, I really didn't have the best teammates, I really wasn't that great of a player. Um, I started becoming a better player near the end of the time of Modern Warfare 2. I was never really a uh, stellar player while it was out and popular um, before Black Ops. But when I started doing spawn traps, uh, this is one of the later maps that I actually did spawn traps on when I started playing the uh, past two or three weeks on Modern Warfare 2. And um, I really enjoyed on the defense side particularly. Uh, there's basically three main spawns on the defense side and they're very, very hard to make those three spawns not be the spawn locations. Um, all three of them are out in the open, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Like, <laughs> Infinity War just basically wanted you to be fucked if you were on defense side in the middle of a spawn trap. Um, that's the only time that I can ever condone painkillers because I understand why Modern Warfare 2 implemented the painkiller mechanism and the death streak mechanism is to give people a chance of actually getting out of you know the spawn traps that, that me and my teammates put on these guys. Um, so I kind of understand Death Streaks a little bit more after playing Demolition Spawn Traps, after realizing, you know, why these things are actually inside of the game. But, uh, you'll see here, I start my streak on this side. I think I actually do the entire streak and the nuke, uh, on offense for this one round. Excuse me, yeah, it's offense that's the best side. I, I completely messed up there, I'm sorry. It's offense that has the better side. Um, and you'll see here that, um, when you, when I call in the Chopper Gunner, all the spawns are outside. There's none of them that are inside the buildings or anything like that which is really really nice the chopper runner went to work I think this is the first time I actually got my chopper runner or my nuke straight from the chopper runner like I got the harriers up I think it was got me one or two kills and then when I got my chopper up in the sky I actually got 14 straight kills of the chopper runner and went straight toward the nuke which is really nice uh, it, it doesn't leave that you know last one or two kills where you're like shitting yourself the whole time wondering whether you're gonna get the, the last couple kills for the nuke um, didn't have that got to a nice safe place to hide at got my chopper gunner called in and then got the nuke so it worked really easy this way it's honestly not always this easy people always say oh a nuke's only a seven kill streak bullshit it's not only just a seven kill streak that just gets you your harriers don't don't be fooled what harriers is only one step you know it's a big step because harriers more times than not will lead to your chopper gunner but harriers is just one part of the equation you know getting the harriers up is the start of it all it gets the ball rolling gets you a little bit of air support up but Harriers are so easy to shoot down. They don't really do too much damage, especially if you're not uh, if they, if you didn't put them in the right spot. Pro tip for the Harriers is the airstrike is very very seldom going to get you more kills than the Harrier will if you put the Harrier pointing toward the right spot. For example, in demolition, the enemies will spawn on one side of the map, but you'll see I do not call the Harrier on the spot where the enemies are going to be at. I call it on a place that will overlook the area where the enemies are going to be at. That way, when the Harrier comes in, it'll zip and zap at the guys that are inside their spawn, not hovering on top of them, cir circling around, um, trying to, trying to uh, you know, move from left to right to get to the people. Instead, it'll be staring at the general area where all the people are spawning at, making it so that they look down right on all the spawns. And I don't think it, it, it turned out too well for me. I don't know how many kills my, my Harrier got me. But if you perfect it on every map and get the, you know, the different sides and get where you need to put your Harriers at, you can get quite a few kills from your Harrier, like more than just the average of, you know, three to maybe four kills. You can sometimes get up to 10 kills of the Harrier. I know I've gotten 15 or 16 kills of the Harrier on Afghan before. Um, it just basically non-stop zapped at the enemies the entire time, and they never stopped respawning. So um, you can get really lucky with the Harrier airstrikes. Just focus more on the Harrier and less on the airstrike. And even if you place it somewhere, you know, around the spawn, but not entirely on it, You'll still get a couple kills with the, with the airstrike sometimes. Sometimes it'll be guys that are outside of the spawn, maybe pushing toward your spawn that, that have cold blooded on that you cannot see from the uh, from the mini map, and you can get a couple guys that way. So I know it's always happened to me before, not always, but it, it has occasionally happened to me before. And uh, there I pick up my chopper gunner. I get a couple more kills on easy guys just laying there, get into a nice cozy spot up here next to the filing cabinet, and go to work. Um, I was a little scared, and this is another tip that I can give before calling in the bigger kill streaks like the chopper gunner, or the AC-130. Maybe even a pave low. Check the scoreboard first, which I did not do until after I called my chopper. As you'll see, when I press the scoreboard, there's only three people, three people on the on the other team. MW2 has great matchmaking, so it'll actually put people in the game within a few seconds. If I just hold on to my bananas and hold on a second, I could have gotten a six-person team on the other side, making the chopper runner a lot easier to get toward the nuke. 
and you'll see here when you watch the spawns, uh, there is no delay of when the red triangle or when the red squares appear in this game as, as there is in Black Ops. So you'll see right when the enemy spawns, and you can see where they spawn at, where they'll spawn in, outside. Um, the only time, like, all the spawns are basically along that edge of the map, all inside, or all outside, I mean, making it really, really easy to rack up the kills in the chopper gunner and go straight toward the nuke. Um, just little tips like that, um, you know, depending what side to call in the chopper gunner, things like that will really help you and get to you towards your nuke, as the, you'll see there I get it, and now I go ahead and call it in. I'll skip scenes and go ahead and call it in. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be posting more nukes. I've got several more left to post with different tips and tactics for each map. So subscribe if you want to see more on those. I'll be posting different setups and different maps every single time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.